I'd like to take a minute to talk about one of our sponsors, Parker Sporlin and Thermostatic Expansion Valves. How can you guys always have the right thermostatic expansion valve for the right application without having to carry hundreds of valves in your truck? Well, that's simple. Using Sporlin's interchangeable cartridge style valves. The Q valve for conventional and the BQ valve for balance port. It, it, it's as easy as one, two, three. It serves thousands of unique applications. So one, you just select a thermostatic element for your application. Two, you select the body style you need. Three, you select the right size cartridge for the application. These easy to select and assemble valves mean you always have the right valve for the job on your truck. For more information on the Q and BQ valves, visit Sporland.com. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the episode. We've all been there in the middle of a job. Everything's going smoothly until, boom, you're missing a part. United Refrigeration Incorporated is one your one-stop shop for all your refrigeration needs. Use your computer or smartphone to go to uri.com slash ARP at any time of the day to check stock on your favorite brand. This is Copeland, Sporland, Refrigerant Conversions, Refrigerant Banking, Carlisle Compressors, Dan Foss, Emerson, CPC boards, sensors, Carol, Husman, KE2 Therm, United Refrigeration Incorporated has a home to these brands and many more. All approved accounts are able to see live inventory and pricing. Product not in stock at your local branch, no problem. We use the nearby stock feature to find a local branch that does have what you need. Are you looking for a branch address, phone number, after hours number? That's all available as well. Just click on the branch locator and search your local branch. Have a model number and looking for a replacement part? URI.com slash ARP has a vast list of quick pick replacement parts. Just search the model number of the equipment you're working on and click the replacement tab parts. If you don't have an account, click the register button and we'll have you on the line in no time. United Refrigeration Incorporated has over 400 locations in North America. Every branch is fully stocked for immediate pickup. At United Refrigeration Incorporated, our branch employees have in-depth technical knowledge so we can help you get what you need when you need it. United Refrigeration Incorporated has all your solutions down cold. Visit your local store or uri.com slash ARP today. Thanks, guys. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Advanced Refrigeration Podcast. You're here with your host, Brett Wetzel, Kevin Compass, and we have a special guest from uh, Kalos Refrigeration, Corey Cruz. How are we doing, Corey? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Wonderful. Corey has the has the uh, the TikTok handle, Bad, Bad TXV, correct? Bad TXV, that's right. I'm on so, TikTok, so, Instagram, Facebook. So check out, check out some of his uh, videos, some of his TikToks. They're, they're hysterical. Uh, and, you know, some of them you'll, you'll actually learn some stuff, so that's awesome. Um, today we're here to talk to, to Corey about, you know, how his transition, um, you know, from HVAC has gone into refrigeration, what has helped him be successful. Um, how long have you actually been doing, uh, you know, uh, HVAC before you actually started transitioning? So I started out in residential back in about 2014. Um, I've done multiple different parts of the trade. So from residential to light commercial to commercial install service, and then, uh, market the last year so about six and a half going on seven years um of just air conditioning uh some light refrigeration here you know gas stations and stuff like that um, nothing too heavy though so going from primarily i mean i would say 99 percent air conditioning into supermarkets was quite, quite a leap for sure <laughs> have you have you started doing anything different like so i mean when i'm talking to like someone that does uh, refrigeration versus uh hvac uh, I'll notice like HVAC guys automatically like, yeah, if you run an R22 at a hundred degrees, it should be like 60, 65 pounds. And, you know, if you're running 410A, it should be about a buck, you know, buck 10, buck 20, somewhere in there. Where if you're talking to a refrigeration guy, everything is always saturated. And the reason why we do that is because, you know, basically there are 20 different freaking refrigerants out there, you know? So like trying to say what pressure is what, you're never going to remember every single fucking PT chart out there. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And you know, loads are different and, and stuff like that, different, uh, metering devices. Um, so 
I definitely prior to getting into supermarkets, you know, I, I was, I always thought when I walked up to a, a cooler, like a, a 404A or something, you know, I'm guilty of Googling what should my pressures be on this system. Uh, Cause I, I literally had no idea what I was doing. Um, now the last few years, I think I've gotten substantially um, more familiar with saturated temperatures and, and air conditioning and, and uh, refrigeration alone. So the, the, the concept was there. Uh, I just had to start transitioning my mind to only think about that and not think about, uh, you know, oh, 404A, I should have 65 pounds on this system or what, you know, something, something dumb like that, uh, which helps with superheating stuff. Cool. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. <laughs> Come on in here. Come on in, boss. <laughs> uh, we're not live streaming, just recording. Yeah. Just audio. audio. Yeah. We should turn on them cameras. <laughs> All right. All right. Let us know if you want to join. <laughs> so, I mean. Go ahead. That is probably going to be the hardest thing for guys to switch over is the saturation thing. W- knowing what, I mean, that seems to be the hardest thing for apprentices to pick up. And from from what you said, I mean, it seems like that is always the hardest transition part is knowing what something should run. On a rack, it's a lot easier because you have the schedule and the controller is already there. But on single units, that's mm-hmm. where you, it, everybody seems to run into this, this hitch of what should it, what should it run? So where did you, how did you, figure that out how did you go about that I was just um probably after like my seventh or eighth TXV change I realized there has to be some kind of method to this no I'm kidding (laughs) um probably like I said I'm a little bit different so I'm a big um googler and youtuber I know how to use my resources um pretty much, you know, when I got in the trade, I didn't know anything. I didn't even know what a condenser was. Um, they were like, Oh, go look at the outside unit. And I didn't even know there was an outside unit. Um, it was only supposed to be like a, a helper kind of deal, like super, super green apprentice. Um, and then I got thrown out into the field within like a few months. So I was not ready when I got thrown out in the field. It was kind of like, Hey, there's nobody here to bail you out. Like, so I had to use my resources. So when I was making that transition into um, refrigeration, I had the book by uh, Dick Wurz, the air conditioning, commercial refrigeration for air conditioning technicians. Yeah. I have that on a PDF on my phone. That, that is an amazing resource for, yeah. for green guys. Yeah. So I, um, on my phone, you know, I, like I said, I have it on a PDF on my phone and the rules of thumb really helped me get like in the right direction. Um, and so I have those highlighted, um, any, anything that I see on social media, social media is such a a key part of your education nowadays. If you know how to utilize it, it's not just for shit posts or can can I curse on here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Okay. Sorry. As long as you're not Brett, just dropping F bombs every two seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Is you know, it's not just for shit posting, which I do my fair share of, of that too. I, I will admit, but I do know how to use my resources, um, I have a, uh, a book that is just um, my reference manual that I have, and I've had it since I was in the trade. It's or since I got in the trade. And it's just handwritten notes that I've wrote, you know, that I've wrote. I've uh, you know training material, stuff with uh, defrost and different types of metering devices, and just stuff I've built throughout the years. And a large portion of that has been. Um, has been brought to my attention or I've learned more just by utilizing social media. So, no, that's great. I mean, th- that is the biggest thing like we struggle with is getting apprentices. Like I train a lot of apprentices. That's the biggest thing I struggle with is getting them to use their resources. Mm-hmm. Like your phone is your best resource you have. Yep. Like, honestly, that is probably the best tool I have is my phone. You know, guys will say, like, get off your phone, get off your phone. Like, okay, well, the phone is no longer, like, a distraction. It is a distraction, but it's also a resource if you know how to use it. Mm -hmm. And, like, Googling stuff. Like, I cannot tell you how many wasted phone calls I get from apprentices and guys, that stuff that could have been Googled, 
and yeah. found out in like 10 seconds. Yep. That is, that's the most irritating yeah. thing in the world because you're like, you know, they're, they're asking me what, you know, I don't know. I can't think of something right off the bat, but they'll ask me a random question that I know is, is out there on Google and they could have did that rather than. But unfortunately, like people are inherently lazy, so they want the answer right there. So one of the things that, I, that I've tried to do, like in teaching and mentoring is, is basically never give them the direct answer. Mm -hmm. uh, always ask a question with the question that they're asking. And typically by second or third question, they're going to be like, oh, I should, never mind. No, I got it. And, you know, I do that for two reasons. One, you know, to make sure they're thinking about what they're doing. Uh, rather than just remembering the answer. And, you know, that's what it, it makes you a better diagnostician. Like, you know, you're basically able to, you know, take, you know, take all those numbers and, and you know, formulate what's actually going on. Um, like you said, you know, trying to figure out what the you know, best pressure should be for for what. Um, you know, if you don't have the manufacturer spec, you know, like on, on a lot of stuff, you can go with, like you said, there's a lot of rules of thumb. So like for a split or a single system, you know, like for condenser TV to try to figure out what the pressure should be. 20 degrees is my is my go-to so yeah. like if it's 75 degrees on a, on a self-contained then basically my saturated condensing temp should be approximately 95 degrees yep. knowing that condensing units typically get about five degrees of subcooling i can also tell you at that temperature my liquid line should be about 90 degrees and it, you know it works out really really well and you know same thing with you know rack stuff which i know kevin you know you and i have talked about this a bunch but you know uh medium temp uh you know condenser td is anywhere from 12 to 18 degrees um, you know, low temp uh, rack, you're talking anywhere from eight to 12. So remembering those rules of thumb will get you in the ballpark a lot if you don't have the exact spec of what it should be. Yeah, exactly. Um, I have to credit my brother, um, Ryan, for a large portion of just my, my thought process going into calls. Um, the, uh, is it good? A little bit closer. Oh, okay. Better? Yep. Nice. I was trying to adjust it. No, you're fine. <laughs> no, but um, so when I was learning, I was on my own. They, uh, my brother and other senior techs that were training. Um, again, I was thrown in before I was necessarily ready just because of our situation. We were, we were a very small company. Uh, so there, it wasn't like I could have somebody out there, you know, on a moment's notice. So, um, it was very important that when I called them, I would, uh, have all the information. Cause when I first started, and I, I mean, still, I see guys with way more experience than what I had back then still do the same thing. You know, when it's call, Hey, uh, I'm going to a call. They said it's frozen oh, up. What do you think it could be? It's like, well, it could be, uh, it could be a lot of different things or, you know, you're at a call and you're like, Hey, um, this is iced up and I'm not sure. Okay. Well, what's your superheat? You know, well, it's like it, if they start out with it's like, I mean, 99% of the time they haven't checked yet. <laughs> um, or, okay, well, are, and refrigerators, you know, are, are all your compressors running or stuff like that? Like a lot of people, and I'm guilty of it too, um, especially back then, just, it's not rocket surgery, what we're doing. Honestly, it's really not. Yeah. It's, it takes time and years of experience to get, proficient at it but to be a good tech I mean if you apply yourself and you utilize your resources and you just think that you know go by your process this it, job is not that hard exactly like I mean if you just do everything that you can to eliminate the problem in, in such a way you'll be able to figure out the issue nine times out more than nine times out of ten uh, just by basic you know do you have airflow do you have uh, what's your superheat? What's your rack looking like? Yada, yada, yada. Um, so people either just don't do that <laughs> for whatever reason. I find for myself personally that it's the thing that I am too lazy to check that it ends up being like all the time. So if I don't think it's a bad temp sensor, I'm not going to check it. I'm not going to do something like that. Um, I'll spend an hour hour and a half just racking my brain around something because I was too lazy to, you know, get my gauges out or check the temp sensor or something. And that's what it ends up being. But you go down this, like, you get tunnel vision sometimes. So just sticking to a process. Yeah, me and him were just talking about this, about being proficient and, you know, moving quick about your job. That whole thing involves that process. Mm -hmm. Like, when once you get that in your head, that process. I mean, a lot of apprentices struggle with that, like getting that process down. Once you get that process down, you quickly 
you know, start learning faster and faster and faster and become better at this job. I mean, this job, like you said, it's not rocket science. It's not hard. It's just about being proficient and having that process and following it. I mean, the same thing you said about uh, having all that information. I mean, that is killer right there. Mm -hmm. I see more new guys fail at that about getting all the information and then just call and call before. Like, don't even think about the call before you get there. Yes. Like, th that is the worst thing you could do. I see guys do that all the time. Oh, I'm going here. I don't know what it's going to be. I mean, what mm -hmm. could it be? I mean, if you don't think about the call before you get there, you're going into it with an open mind. Like with like with me. I don't want to know what the last guy did. Yes. Don't yeah. care. Don't, don't care. care. Like, I, I yes. hate logbooks. I absolutely <laughs> you wouldn't be there if, <laughs> yeah, if the I, last I guy did something good. Exactly. If the last guy fixed the problem, then I wouldn't be. I see it all the time. Well, well, so and so said this was bad, so I'm just gonna go there and say it's bad too because uh, you know it, it, it's we're waiting on parts. Okay, well, go look at it and see if it is because half a time so and so was probably wrong. Yep. I mean, I don't care what the last guy did. I'm there to go look at it with an open mind. That, that's that's a great process. Like look at everything with an open mind. So I have to ask you because I mean one of the biggest things that I that I tell guys to do uh, is you know they have to have some personal development time you know basically you know looking up reading some manuals you know and and boning up on the stuff that you're actually trying to learn and I, I get the response of, I don't have time for that you know what I mean and and oh, one God. of the things I, I've you know, ask guys to do, I was like, pick one device on that rack or, you know, one device on that piece of equipment, download the manual on that thing and read up for that one week. So every year, if you did this, that's 52 new things that you learned about your career. What have you done? I mean, you know, I, I know, you know, with the, you know, the shortage of, of employees and the, you know, the shortage of, of tradesmen, you know, the, the amount of time that you have for personal development has went down a little bit, like as mm -hmm. across the field, but what have you done to try to combat that to, you know, to, to give some advice to some other people that, you know, that are trying to better themselves? So the thing is, you gotta, I look at it like this. Are you doing what you're doing now, you know, whether that be refrigeration or air conditioning or anything, do you see it as a job or do you see it as a career? Um, if it's a job, preach yeah. on, preach yeah. on. <laughs> if it's a job and you're just trying to put in your eight hours and go home, you don't want to get better. You don't want to, or, you know, you don't want to excel. You don't want to try to be in the top percentage of, of your company, of your, uh, your region, um, wherever. Then by all means, I mean, just get by. Uh, but if this is a career, there's absolutely no reason for the excuse that you don't have time. I guarantee you, you have time. I, pr I, there's no way you don't, even if it's something like you said, as simple as just reading a manual. I mean, if you look at a, uh, I'll just throw something out there, like a Henry oil regulator manual or something, you know, like a 90, 30 or whatever. Um, it's like three pages, mm -hmm. but it has a ton of great information in there. Um, you can read that and even if you read at a third grade level in like <laughs> 10 minutes and you can read it, set, you know, seven, eight, nine times in a row and you will, you will understand it a hell of a lot more than you do now. What, is, what does Brian say? Read the fantastic the manual. The fantastic manual. manual. Yeah. Yeah. RTFM. Well, <laughs> it's just the value you get out of that. Like guys don't, a lot of guys don't understand the value you get out of that. Okay. You read that manual. Now at two o'clock in the morning, Mm -hmm. You're not scratching your head and trying to read a manual at two o'clock in the morning. You're frustrated. You're pissed off. You're you're at a call. Yep. You don't want to be at. You don't understand what's going on. You're trying to make something work. You're trying to make something work the way you think it does in your head. And this whole thing just gets more difficult. Oh my god. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, there's that special this, sauce, man. See, I told you we should have the cameras on right now. <laughs> well, it's not going to do us any good. Now we've had we've had two two oars at the door. Uh, one with the one with a shirt, one with not. So this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so um, a quick little story. When I, it's Corey, all about Corey. Just totally lost train of thought. Seeing uh, seeing beautiful beautiful am, Nathan over there. I am just amazed at that. That was he had some hairy <laughs> nipples. Um, <laughs> uh, so it's all about your mindset, basically. Um, you gotta. The more you know directly correlates with how much money you're going to make in this trade. Is that not what we're all doing? That is one of the most frustrating things. Cause like I, it, nothing is more irritating when, when you have a kid that's been doing this for a year and he's like, I need a $10 an hour raise. <laughs> well, I, what, what, so do I, <laughs> what, what, I mean, what have you, what have you done to, to, to warrant that? 
Why not? It's, well, if you're not it, put, if you're not putting the personal development in there and where you're trying to better yourself for the betterment of yeah. you and the company, I, I I would have no problem giving somebody a ten dollar an hour raise if, if if they if they if they perform and put the, the personal development in. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is like a lot of guys that are like, well, I showed up and I was on time. Well, I, that's <laughs> that's that's not enough. Not for that yeah, kind of increase. That's basic stuff. Yeah, you should be doing that. Well, like, at this point in time, that's actually probably pretty good. So. If you're actually <laughs> just showing up on time. Yeah. Um, so, so, I mean, says, I have, says the kid that was late. I was yeah. going to say, I kind of have a problem with that. That's one. <laughs> but you know what? That's something that I'm working on. That is probably my biggest pet peeve. So, so here's the thing with me, though, is that... All right, I'm not even going to lie. I, I'm what you would call um, habitually tardy sometimes, um, but not – and, again, that's that's on me. However, how I see it, it's not, like, crazy. It's, like, you know, like 30 minutes or whatever. I, I never miss deadlines for calls or anything like that, but more importantly – It was an th- hour late today. I don't know yeah, what he's saying. Well, this is, my, this is my day off. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, But – when I work, like, you know, and everybody who works with me throughout the years, they can attest to that. Like, d- projects or service calls, where they nobody's going to suffer for me being late. If I, if I need to come in early, like, I, I've, I've came in 4 a.m. multiple, I mean, more probably more than anybody here, uh, but I also came in late more than anybody. Just, it kind of, you get to a point where, um, at least in my head, that uh, y- I I guess it's my way of fighting burnout a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes well, I just need that extra 30 minutes, but you know what? When I get to work, I'm going to be working. I'm going to, nobody's going to suffer for, uh, or get pushed back because of my targets. Now that is completely controversial point, by the way. I just want to stress that enough and that most people will disagree with me. That's just my personal take on things. Um, just don't screw over anybody and uh, know when you can and can't be a little see, bit. I'm the opposite of that. I'm a psychopath. I am always early. For the most part, like it's, and everybody I work with, I expect to be there on the same time. Yeah, and I have that whole like mentality. I don't know why. If if you're not earlier, that's late. the right way to be. Well, but my, my grandmother used to do that. Like if she if she'd be a half an hour late, if you were only 15 minutes, uh, or I'm sorry, 30 minutes early, and you were only 15 minutes early, you were considered late. I mean, yeah, which is kind of don't like feel crazy. bad because Brett's late to everything. So. I am okay. That no, absolutely not. You can talk to anyone I work Brett, with. Brett's Brett's late to everything. You can just tell it's the time zones. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like uh, you know, I th- I th- you know what I think he's referring to. You know, uh, us recording, and like most of the time, it's because I got three kids that I got to take care of and laundry and everything else. So yeah, see, I mean, it's it, it it really depends. If you're good at this job and you do your job. I mean, you can make your own schedule. Yeah. Let's be honest. Like, you you could pretty much make your own schedule at this job if you are good and you do what you're supposed to do. And so, I mean, yeah, coming in late a little bit, like, mm-hmm. it doesn't really affect anything. Yeah, and it's it's all circumstantial, right? I'm not – whenever there needs – okay, so, like, if you have a call, like, hey, we need somebody here by 7. Yeah, don't show up at 730. But, I mean, if it's just, like, a normal day, you know, you, you maybe got – I don't know how your guys' call directors go, but we have a certain amount of time, obviously, yeah, to get to a call thing. depending on the severity – um, if it's for 10 a.m. and it's something dumb and nothing else is popping off, you work late the night before, you know, going to 9:30 instead of 7:30, whatever, you know, that's how that's how I think of it. Again, it's circumstantial, and if you are just getting into the trade and you don't ever take don't my don't on don't that. do what Corey's doing. Yeah, don't, don't, I'm just being honest here and in full transparency. <laughs> but again, you're you, this isn't you as an apprentice. Like exactly, you, you, as an apprentice, completely wash all that out of your mind and be there early and with coffee for the lead tech, so <laughs> or Red Bull. So, um, but yeah, the always show up on time and you'll know as you get, that's another reason why you should get better at your trade because then your hours are a little bit more flexible usually. <laughs> Cause you've been above and beyond, you know, in your time being an apprentice here and like you're putting in the personal development. Oh man, I was up reading late last night, reading an E2 manual, you know, mm-hmm. just, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's, that's what they all say. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, it's so to get back on what we were saying before, uh, a quick little story. So what made me realize, start treating this trade, it was way back in air conditioning when I first started, though. Um, I was about a year in, and 
yeah, I was still doing residential and light commercial air conditioning, but I was doing a residential install. Now I was a helper on dozens and dozens and dozens. We get, we keep getting visitors out the door. We should have just done this out on the main stage. Seriously. <laughs> um, the, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm in, uh, I'm at a customer's house. I got left to finish up the install, right? Yeah. And I don't know if you guys know, like, the Dunning-Kruger effect or whatever, but um, yes. it's uh, I'm a full believer of that because I'm a oh, 100%. example. 100%. That, that is true with so, a lot of people. So I thought I was the uh, the bee's knees. I'm not. I'm going to try to keep cursing down in a minute. No, you're fine. So um, I'll make up for it. Yeah, I... <laughs> Uh, we're only allotted a certain amount of curse words. So. I think so. Um, but no, I just, I thought I was way better than I was because, you know, I'm doing these nice condenser installs. I'm hooking up five wires. I'm, you know. I'm bending. the best five wire hooker upper exactly. in the world. But, you know, in the t- when you don't know anything and you think you do, you can have a self-inflated sense of your own intelligence. So one of the, one of the guys that taught me refrigeration, like, you know, one of the important lessons that he told me is always stay humble and, you know, yep. and, and stay away from, you know, usually after about five years of a technician doing, whether it be install or service work or whatever, they think they know everything. Mm-hmm. And usually the day that you think you know everything is the day you get, you know, get that call where it makes you feel ridiculously oh, dumb. Yeah. Absolutely. Where I, all I of feel a sudden like you, you get, you get put on your ass, uh, you know, you're like, uh, uh, okay, maybe I don't know as much as what I do what I think I know. Absolutely. So in this particular instance, I mean, it, it was one of like, you know, I think everybody's career, they have a few moments that really are like, um, uh, break either breakthrough moments or crossroad moments. You can go one way or the other. You know, if you screw something up really bad, you can take it as negative or, you know, take it as a positive. In this case, sh- long story short, I ended up was being I, I was left to finish up this install, and there wasn't much to do, but um, I completely hacked this thing up, I, and I kind of knew it as I was doing. It just nothing was working right, and the customer called back the next day and just complained about everything which rightly so and I had to go back there with my boss and uh, the lead tech which was actually my brother at the time and this guy is just walking around pointing out every single thing that I did that looks like crap and he was completely right and I felt like I was you know this just small the smallest I've ever felt most um embarrassed the the closest you'll ever feel to being in the Spanish Inquisition yeah exactly and (laughs) I I just remember saying like that day I was like wow I do not ever want that to happen again so that in my personal experience that was my like eureka moment like hey I more so than just making more money more so than anything like I just want to be confident in what I do and I don't want to be punked out by any customer slash um, employer for um, stuff that I don't necessarily know especially the basic stuff that I thought I did yeah so that was the day that I I ended up realizing like hey you know what let me start taking this seriously I'm going to start not only studying while I'm on the clock I'm going to do that in my own time um and not not anything crazy, but just writing down questions. So if I had questions, I would write it down in my phone, in my notes. And then, you know, when I was in the bathroom, I'd be watching a YouTube video or, you know, just Googling it or asking dumb questions. I mean, people who uh, I'm on the supermarket page on Facebook and if they're um, I, I ask dumb questions all the time, even now. I mean, it's just stuff that I have that it's a great resource to use and that's commendable because a lot of people the biggest problem people have with public forums like that they're afraid to get ridiculed and you know and and like on that i'm, I'm an admin on that site mm-hmm. and like I, i've tried to you know cut down like if, if someone's getting hacked apart for asking a legitimate question like mm-hmm. what the hell like we've all been there no yep. one no one came out of utero and was like i'm a, I'm a refrigeration mechanic right <laughs> off the bat you know what i mean, I mean so, Kevin. Some some people need to like, have a little thicker skin though. It's not that bad. No, I get for it. God, for God's yeah. sakes, his boss made a fucking GoFundMe for my, <laughs> which looks amazing again. <laughs> like people need to have some thick skin. Like I mean, you says do. the guy that hit me in the balls yesterday because he's like, oh, you were making fun of me yesterday about my hair, oh, Mister Thick great. Skin over here. It's okay, you take it too far. No, okay. <laughs> well, maybe may, maybe you need to take your own advice. Maybe you need to have a little bit thicker skin because you take it too far. Uh-huh. <laughs> Other people make it funny. You just like get like malicious with it. 
I think it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, they do, but it's like there's some people take it too far. I get like attacking people with dumb questions. Um, but if you, if you notice the people that usually do that or the people who have no content out there, no questions, no posts, they just have a bunch of comments that they are, you know, they, they were born a refrigeration God or an air conditioning God and they've never made a mistake or anything like that. Um, to be honest, it's a lot of the older guys. It is. Well, that's why I, I was saying, you know, I kind of shit post a little bit sometimes because it triggers them a, a lot. So, you know, like I, I was, well, you older. Guys are, <laughs> Brett, Brett's older. So, I mean, <laughs> well, they don't, they don't understand like trolling or anything like that. They're just uh, jokes and stuff, you know, I ran an experiment. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 see, I see that. It. I seen it. What was the experiment? I, I, um, so I was cleaning up a store <laughs> And there was a, I had a screen that was just like all smushed up. It's an expansion valve screen. It was all uh, smushed up from, it was like in my drawers or whatever, but I had it in a little bucket and I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I was like, I'm going to run an experiment because um, just to have fun, you know, it was a long day. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to video myself cutting one of these screens out and I'm going to, oh. I'm going to post it. I'm going to say, anybody, uh, <laughs> is anybody taking... Uh, the screens out because they keep getting clogged. <laughs> and you know, the, oh my god, yeah, there, was, there was people ab- absolutely <laughs> this shit. Well, I didn't know that, it was going to ha- blow up. That, that I mean, the the thing is that happens. Like, oh, I, I, I know. I've, I've been to stores where I'm like, what the hell? Somebody cut the screens. Now I'm pulling down. I never them. thought about that when I was doing that. That could actually like happen. It I mean, happens a lot. There, there was it's a, amazing. There was a guy that used to work with us, uh, went to wor- work in somewhere else, and, and he's like, Brett, you're never going to believe what they're doing. I'm like, what are they doing? He's like, well, you know, they just decided to, to take a pair of side cutters, a pair of dikes, and cut, cut <laughs> off every single expansion. You can't call them that anymore. I, I, gar- <laughs> Jesus. I guarantee you they never had a dirty screen call. No, never, never. <laughs> They're just that, replacing that, expansion valves. I, I've been to, like, multiple different states working, and I, I've caught people – from other states doing it. Like I've, you got to wonder what's going through their heads. Well, like I, I came to a job site. It was a troubled job site. It was a disaster new store. And they're like, the screens are plugging up. Okay. I'm pumping things down the rack room mm-hmm. for them as I'm fixing things. And I'm like, Hey, you guys don't need brake cleaner down there. He's like, no, we don't have any brake cleaner in here. I'm like, what are you guys cleaning the screens with? And he goes, well, I've just been cutting them. <laughs> I'm like, look at him. I didn't even know what to say. I'm like, okay. Um, well, it's time for you to leave now. Today's episode is sponsored by the new Reefer Shield Differential Pressure Monitor from Westermeyer Industries. When the filter element of your coalescing oil separator is contaminated, it can hurt your system's performance and efficiency. But how do you know when it's time to replace that filter? Way too long to replace and you could end up with a nasty filter blowout. But replacing too often can be a waste of time and money. The answer is installing a differential pressure monitor. The new Reefer Shield. RDP-01 Differential Pressure Monitor is available now from Westermeyer Industries. To find out more information, email sales at westermeyerind.com. That's sales at westermeyerind.com. Don't you wish there was like a video camera just following every, like these people around just to see what they do? I mean, genuinely interested. Just... Well, the thought process, right? Like, yeah. what, what are you doing? You're, you're, you're like, you go up there, you, you take the time to pump out that system, and you're making a conscious effort. You're looking at that screen. You're like, <laughs> they're like, it's you know, going to plug up again. I, I don't so, need yeah. that. You know, yeah. I, I don't want to just, it's fine. just, you know, cut it, done. Well, the, the, if just, you open it up all the way, that it'll have, uh, you know, a bigger opening so you won't have as much debris. But that's just like the mentality. And I hate this. And I argue with the construction superintendents all the time about this. Oh, we're going to put dryers in front of the valves. Oh. Why? I hate that. But you know Why? What? Why are we putting... Oh, because um, it's going to catch everything and it doesn't plug up as fast. What you just said is it's the most dumb. ridiculous thing ever. It's not going to plug up as fast. Okay. How about we just properly purge yeah. and do the job and... I go, what it, What costs more money in the end? I go, me pumping down a system and pulling a screen, you know, shutting a hand valve and pulling a screen? Yeah, it takes or me cutting 30 a, seconds. <laughs> or me cutting a dryer out that takes, you know, two to three hours. Well, they're, yeah. they're, they're, well, see, what sucks is, you know, sometimes it's a customer-based thing. There's a certain customer that if you pull out a filter dryer, they at least want you to put screen back a in. screen in, but like a non-serviceable one. Like, I could understand. But, like, but they, why? I if mean, you look at those non-serviceable screens, have you ever cut one? 
No. It is. Oh, the, the mesh is real thick, right? So, like, no, it's like. Uh, it's not real fine. Have you ever seen like the, the inside what of like, an eight ton TXV? Like, uh, yeah. Sportland has those like. It is basically to keep like curly cues of copper out. Yeah. In mm-hmm. like Armaflex dust. Or Armaflex But junk. they still back up. And that's that's what I mean. Like, I've never seen one back up. Have you? Yes. Like with I mean, what? I mean, if they're a screen, they're going to. With what? A piece of a scroll compressor? Man, I know. Um, <laughs> there, there was a system that, that uh, had a lot of, uh, they had a lot of power issues. So they, they burnt out, I think, uh, multiple, multiple compressors. And then we were having junk build up because all that debris, you know, no one ever did a. I mean, that's big debris though. Like. Yeah. yeah. No, I agree. I, I, well, which, nev- one, which ones are you talking about? The subco ones? Yeah, I've never subco se- spun. I've never seen the subco spun ones. I've never seen one plug up. Like, I, I don't even. I don't. It's not possible to plug up with. Uh, Why? Because they're so big, or what? Yeah, like if oh, you okay. if you ever taken apart no. like a bigger expansion valve, like a like eight ton valve, like bigger. Yeah, I mean, have what? you ever seen like the 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 non serviceable screens inside of like a Sporlin valve that are like fixed? You can't pull them out. Like you can see through the hole. Like the holes are, are like it's not as fine. Like it's you, yeah, you, I haven't seen it in that application, but I have seen non serviceable screens on. They're like the size valves. of like a ballpoint pen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like yeah. if you like if you, the, the the actual like squares are like the size of a ballpoint pen. It's like huh. it's not going to stop soot. Or, so I, I don't understand why they do that. Why would you make a non? So all all screen? bigger valves obviously like. You have you have more flow, so you're not going to be able to get a like a. Oh, sure, sure. You're not going to get a screen in there, so you have like a five eighths or half inch inlet. You're not going to be able to get a screen in there. Yeah. So like with those valves, for for example, like big box retailers, Uh Sam's and Costco, for example. um, They're POS freezers. They're POS freezers. Those are all big valves. uh, Sam's Club sometimes you get serviceable valves in them, but like Costco, for example, it's an eight ton valve inside inside the freezer. There's there is a internal screen in there, but it's that gotcha. ballpoint mesh screen. So you'd have to unbraise it, and so, by that time, it's the it's. But there's so there's no reason. Like I've pulled apart so many of these valves, and every time I embrace them, they're clean. There's not shit in there. There may be a couple curly cues of copper, but who cares? Yeah, like, it's stuck in the screen. It's usually you have to clean the, the you know end up get, cleaning off the pins and the, stuff the, because it, all that stuff's oh, yeah, getting the push through. Rods and all it, that. it gets in the push rods and it gets in the cage of the valve. Yep. and then you end up having to clean the push rods. And guys are in there changing valves, eight ton valves, ten ton valves that aren't bad because they don't yeah. want to clean the push rods. Yeah, like, I mean that's like that's like with any expansion valve. I mean that's if it's if it's clean, you know, you're, there's only so many things to go wrong that, that, on that expansion. It's a pretty simple device, uh, genius, but a simple device. That, that, that's like my whole process with valves. Like you were talking about earlier, like if the screen is clean and there's no dryer in front of it, I know I don't have a liquid issue. At that point, I'm just pumping it completely down and I'm going to clean the valve. Yep. Because the pins are probably stuck. Oh, man, I have some crazy pictures of some yeah. of the valves that I pulled apart. Because, I mean, Q-bodies and stuff, they're completely rebuildable. So, you can you don't even necessarily have to. I know that, again, it's another controversial point. Like, oh, why don't you just rebuild them? I prefer to rebuild them because I don't want to drag the torches out and all that stuff. I'm, Be more efficient. Be yeah, late. It, Like, if it's if it working smarter, not harder, man. Yeah, I mean, what's going to go wrong on that brass body or, you know, whatever? It's... There's nothing. If you can change the push rods, cartridge, power head, and I mean, for me personally, I, I have uh, some spare stems and stuff that, you know, when people over tighten them. That so, yeah, always keep those stems and springs. The, the yeah. nice thing about the Sporlins is, say you have a non-adjustable expansion valve. Yep. Like, for some god-awful reason, somebody at Husband had this genius idea, and there's this, like, they're all over Chicago still. <laughs> so, I mean, I keep a couple on my trucks, so though. If we do, like, a case change or a case move or something, and it's like... Shit! Now this case is like two degrees colder. You got to go in there and adjust yep. the valve. Like at least you could drop the bottoms on there without having to change all the valves. Yeah, and I think um, the BQ um, SQE they're they're like they're all interchangeable. Other than the needle, I think is the only Correct. difference on them. Well, in the well, the BQ would be the balance board. The cartridge is all in the cartridge. Well, yeah, push rods I, I, all I'd, I'd say with yeah. the stem only. The, the yeah, stem. Uh, I will say this though, like watch changing push rods. On valves, mm-hmm. like, because sometimes the tolerances. Oh, I know. I've seen that. Like, it's a little bit, like, some of the push rods are a little thicker or something. Yeah, yeah. so the, you have to watch because, like, yeah, I've seen that. Sporlin actually told me this. Like, the some of the tolerances on the older older rods weren't as tight mm-hmm. as the newer rods. So, especially on the bigger yeah. valves, you may have, you may run into issues with that where the. I just ran into that a uh, few weeks ago, actually. Yep. So I mean, that, I just took a hammer and ding ding ding. You know, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, dude, I, I've had we had a we had a uh, system that was uh, they would tell they would tell me every year we have to replace the compressor at least once or twice. Oh, nice. And they tried re- they tried replacing the expansion valve. They've tried tried even 
as far as actually sanding down or gr- grinding down the actual push rods oh. to actually make it a little bit different in size. The, the whole thing on that particular unit, basically, it was uh, too much static pressure on the duct work. So I started uh-huh. cutting, dis- uh, you know, uh, distribution grills on there. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, my superheat went from two up to eight. But, you know, they, they, tried, a- they tried everything in their power just trying to, to do that by altering the expansion valve. Because, like, if you go up to, like, an O valve, right? They have an O5, an O, I think, eight, maybe a 10. And then it goes to like a 15 or a 13. Mm-hmm. So there's not in exact sizes. So, you know, they're, they're a fairly broad range, but you know, those expansion valves are balanced port as well. So, I mean, they're, they're supposed to be, you know, have that little bit of wider range. Um, what else, what else have, have you really done, um, you know, to, to make you uh, a, a better, uh, better service tech from, you know, from going from HVAC to refrigeration? Cause I mean, I'm sure you're going to test this. The on-call schedule at most times sucks yeah. doing refrigeration. Yeah. Um, now, I'm kind of blessed in my s- circumstances because um, our supermarket side here at Kalos isn't like our bread and butter. You know, we're primarily air conditioning, residential, commercial construction, electrical, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So we have a smaller um, group of guys. I pr- we probably are the youngest supermarket group, you know, that I know of at least. We, Everybody except for one person and Nathan, obviously, uh, is under like 28. So we're pretty young, but um, what's good is that we have a really good team around us, which helps out tremendously. If you if you can get along with your coworkers and all, and you guys are on the same page as far as quality, like everybody's trying to get better, that makes your on call a hell of a so lot much better, hell of a lot easier because you're not going on. You know, Friday three o'clock come in, they're like, mm, yeah, let's just go. It'll be fine. It'll be fine <laughs> through the weekend. You know, and then you're gonna call on Saturday. If, you know. It, early in the morning or late at night, whatever. But so in our, our on-call is not horrible. Um, we're probably an anomaly in that instance because I'm sure most companies, you, you know, you service multiple different departments, I mean, uh, stores and, you know, a lot more of them than we do. So the on-call, I feel for y'all <laughs> with that. Uh, the on-call here, it still sucks. We still get the 1 a.m., 2 a.m. calls and everything, but the volume is not where it was, especially since the pa- about you know the last year or so. We've really got a hold of a lot of these stores that have been neglected for a long time and have cleaned a lot of them up. Um, one thing that's helped, another thing that's helped me tremendously going into supermarkets is going to, it's just listening, honestly, as simple as that sounds. And having an open mind, um, willing to, I'm the kind of person who, if somebody, you know, a trainer, for example, you know, one of the senior guys, you know, they're talking to me and they're, I'm asking them a question, they explain it to me and I'm not kind of getting it, or maybe I even don't believe it, you know, um, it doesn't sound right to me. Uh, I'm just not going to take them a hundred percent at their word, not anywhere in in a disrespectful uh, manner, but I'm also going to do my own research from there. You know, if I, if I've asked and I can't really, I'm still not quite getting it. I'm going to, um, explore my resources again. Um, ask on Facebook or social media or ask another technician or, you know, trying to understand certain things. So what I try to do is everybody I've worked with, and I've done it in my career, I try to take like a little piece of all like the senior guys that have trained me throughout the years of like what really stand, makes them stand out and kind of um, incorporate that into my overall sense as a technician so you know if they're very thorough on their process of how they go through things like I'm like okay I like that I'm gonna you know I'm gonna incorporate that like I'm gonna really focus on that if they're good at um, anything you know just taking a little bit of the best parts of everybody that you look up to or that you um, or that trains you and just making that into your own and That'll make it, in my opinion, a lot, a lot easier on you because <laughs> you'll have a little bit of everything and it'll make you a better all around tech. You're not going to be a super tech overnight, obviously, but it'll help you. So just doing your own due j- diligence. Don't just automatically take what somebody says 100% truth. I mean, yeah, that, I see that happen all the time. I see a lot of younger guys just take whatever this old guy told them, mm-hmm. you know, as 
You don't ever word, need to pull a vacuum. Yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> the word of how it should be. And the, I, let's be honest here, man. A lot of people don't understand a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And people in their own minds come up with how they think something works. And it may work in their head that way. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't. I mean, so, like, you're double-checking that is a great thing. Yep. You, obviously, you got to do it respectively, you know, to yeah. these guys. Because some people... Some some guys get, you know, real butthurt about that. I mean, but at the same time, you want to make sure you're getting, like, factual good information. You just got to know how to play it. And, yep. you know, don't just go out and tell the guy he's wrong. Uh, trust me, I did that a lot. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's a way to make enemies. And I'm not saying, yeah. like, they could not even – they might be 100% right, but maybe yep. their skill set – or their way of explaining things doesn't necessarily make sense to you. So, you know, that saying, like, if yeah. you got to be able to explain it to a five-year-old. Well, I mean, that there is some truth into that. Um, so if you're not, if you've tried to understand something, and like I said, if it either doesn't sound right or you're still not getting it, just don't think like, oh, I'll the, never, I'll never, the, I'll never know this. There's you know? a lot of amazing guys in this trade that are really good at their job yeah. that suck ass at explaining things yes. and yeah. are terrible teachers or don't even want to. I've yeah. Or they that. don't want to, like or they, they don't have the patience. Yeah. They don't have the patience or they're just like terrible teachers. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean, you could be a great tech. It is what it is. They, that's your job. You're, you're a great tech, but you are a horrible teacher. Yep. Those guys, like, honestly, like, like I try to keep apprentices away from those guys. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, they're great techs, but like, they're not going to teach this guy anything. Yeah. I may have like a mediocre tech, like he's pretty good. He understands even what his job is, what he's supposed to do. But he's very good at explaining things. That's to me, that's more valuable. Like yeah. it's, I want somebody that's good at explaining things. And you're in a really good position right now because you're young. Mm -hmm. You're you're eight months into this, and I've seen what you could do, and you're good tech. Thank you. But you also have this ability. You still have this in your head. This is what made me real good in the beginning. Is you have this in your head, like. I just learned this not too long ago. Like I'm, I'm fresh at this. Mm -hmm. So you understand what, what it's like yeah. to, to, Oh, do that. absolutely. So you're going to be able to teach people fairly well mm -hmm. and fairly easy. Like, especially young guys coming up, like this is how I learned. Yeah. I'm only like, what are you like? 24, 25, 20, oh, 27, 27. Okay. And three quarters. Yeah. <laughs> he, he just looks like he's 12. Yeah. <laughs> so you're this is all premeditated. This is the moneymaker yeah. right here. So, yeah. Managers love it. <laughs> like, Oh, look at this kid. So you're 27, so okay? Like, you got a 23-year-old coming up. I mean, you understand the position they're in. You were just mm -hmm. there not too long ago. I mean, that's that's what makes it easier for you mm -hmm. to learn. I mean, I trained a ton of younger guys. Like, I'm still, I'm only my, I'm only 32, but like, I, I still understand. Like, yeah, 10 years ago, I was in the same boat as all these guys. Yeah, I didn't know anything. You know, I understand how to train people, and it, it makes me an effective trainer. I, I'm able to teach these younger guys. A hundred times faster than these old guys can. Yeah, I, I've been, and I, I totally agree with that. And, you know, one of the things I want to do eventually with my career is I do want to teach. Like that's, that's, I don't want to run calls, you know, for the rest of my career. I want to end up teaching. Um, yeah. One thing you can do uh, to help this, because I, I love diagnostic. Like, mm -hmm. I love diagnosing stuff. Same. Um, and if you become really proficient at diagnosing, um, you can have a lot of people do your own follow-up. And I know, you know, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. You know, because th there are some times where you're just like, I, I don't like doing follow-up, because you know, behind someone else. Because they're normally either A, wrong, yeah. or, 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 you know, or it's I just going to be a, a bitch of a job. But if you get really good at diagnosing and you and you and you become anal retentive and you're ordering like you know how long it's going to take, pad a little bit of time because you know you're probably not going to be the one end up fixing it up, and then that gives uh, apprentices you know they'll read through the ticket and it's like oh that's how he came to the conclusion oh now I know how to do this now yep. I know how to change out this part so it, you know it trickles down you know basically by you being a good diagnostician and you know being able to you know order the right stuff you know people not mind actually doing your follow-up and learning off of it. That's a great point. Um, and that's something that is probably like my number one thing is that uh, when, so I do that actually, even now, uh, if I diagnose some, you know, and it works out like somebody's following up. And it's up usually a bad TXV, right? A hundred percent of the okay. time. Right. Um, so I, <laughs> I like to go overboard on the notes a little bit. And I've always been like that. Um, I don't know if it's my ADHD or something, but 
That's um, what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Usually, like, I'll write, See, I'll write a, a novel. I have ADHD, and I get yelled at all the time for writing, like, three sentences. Yeah, I hate that. Oh, oh I, my I God, get, I hate that. I get in trouble so much for my paper. Oh, you don't so know? I've been told by, like, every company I've worked at. Too much information is not enough information, in my opinion. I have been told by every company i worked at, yeah, you're super smart, but your paperwork is absolutely horrible. That's such a common trait in texts like that. Like, so I, it, it, I've read a novel so many times. Like I've ran, I've actually like so we have this app that we use, and I don't know how many times where because I text talk all the time, and and I know you know guys that I work oh with. Oh my are, god! Uh, yeah, I know. Please don't. Uh, dude, like you don't even want to know, but like, cause, cause actually as my old service manager said to me, he's yeah. like, you know what? I, I, I miss having you in my department. I'm like, why? He's like, cause I loved reading your fucking tickets yeah. and seeing how screwed. Dude, we, what? well, that's the thing though. One, it makes it, um, easier on the guy who comes back or the, whoever's doing the billing or whatever. But, um, it, how I, when I started doing like really long and thorough notes, it was actually like kind of a subtle thing because I wanted the senior guys to read it and then be like, wow, this guy has no clue what the hell he's doing. Maybe he needs some help. Um, or, Hey, this guy nailed it. Like you, you did this, you did this, you did this. So it was kind of like my way of just like, Hey, I think I know what's going on here. And I, I want to figure it out myself. Um, I'm going to put everything that I did <laughs> in these notes, what I found when I got there, what I did while I was there and what was, it doing after I left. Um, and then if a callback comes in, it's like, okay, well that was wrong or that doesn't look right. You know, they can look back on it or if call is coming in, like, yeah, man, that was definitely the issue, you know, good job, whatever. And it, it gives me a solid, um, you know, sense. You, you know where you messed up. Yeah. And it, and it just makes me feel better. Like saying like, Hey, this is all I did. You know, I didn't spend two hours on this call just freaking um, go, scrolling through TikToks or something, you know? <laughs> so, like, one thing I've always told apprentices, but you kind of, like, hit on this, um, as long as we're not, like, super busy. So, if we're not, it's not 95 degrees out, we're not slammed. If you're putting parts in as an apprentice, I always try to tell guys, leave a little bit of extra time in there for that guy. Mm -hmm. You know, if it, like Brett said, if you think it's going to take a little bit, add a little bit of time, pad it. Okay, well, as an apprentice, I always tell guys, Try to figure out how they came to that conclusion that that part's bad. Re, yeah. and I, I still do this to, the, to this day. Like I, if I'm putting parts in that somebody else wrote up, I'm re-diagnosing it myself. Mm -hmm. Because, unfortunately, we have problems where we are, and uh, it's probably not diagnosed right. Yeah. So, like, unfor I hate putting other people's parts in. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. most people. Well, when you do that, too, like, if you have somebody, not just putting in the parts, but, like, if you're the guy who um, – knows somebody's going to follow up with that. It's even more important, I think, to put those notes yeah. in there, um, whether that be on an app or your company's communications site or even the logbook. But um, one of my biggest pet peeves is like, if especially if it's going to be a bigger job. It's not like, oh, we need to come back and change like a temp sensor or something, you know. Um, but material, proper material lists and thorough material lists down, like, I like to get them down to the wire nut if I yeah. need it, if I, if I can. Um, and because the biggest thing that would suck, especially in supermarkets too. Like, I mean, we have a lot of our stores where the racks are on the roof and it's like, Oh, you don't want to, I will bring everything that I think I need that I think I might possibly need. And then something also to bail me out if something else goes bad. So, um, because I don't want to make the trips and stuff. So it sucks to be like, oh, okay, hey, go do this job. And you're going behind somebody. And it's like, yeah, you'll just need this. And then you're like, well, you know, th this new part is on the wrong side. And I'm going to ne actually need this too. And this and that. It's just, a, a, it makes that. Taking the extra time. Just yeah, it just makes it so much more unpleasant to do that. When yeah, it does. It's And it's, it can breed some resentment a little no, bit it, on that it, job. It, it, it does and it, it's hard Especially to get away it's habitual <laughs> it, it's hard to get away from that and like like just look at how things need to be piped and other stuff like that but like like, like i said was my point like if you're an apprentice and say you're going there to put a valve in mm -hmm. somebody diagnose the valve re-diagnose it first spend mm -hmm. a half hour don't spend three hours doing it spend a half hour yep look at it see how they come to that conclusion because a the valve may not be bad i mean obviously you don't want to like start a you know, you know shit shit show with you like some senior tech because it's probably <laughs> not going to end good if you're an apprentice. But at the same time, 
you want to know the parts you're putting in are the correct parts yeah. and it's diagnosed right. So, I mean, I always tell guys, okay, so it's a great learning experience. Learn how this, try to figure out how this guy came to this conclusion. So this oil valve is bad. Okay. Look at it yourself. Try to figure out how it's been a half an hour. Try to figure out how he came to the conclusion yep. that the part is bad. Work backwards. Yeah. How know? is the TXV bad? Yeah. Oh, well, the hand valve was turned off. <laughs> yeah. Generally, when I see that shit, it's like, uh, okay, well, that needs to be diagnosed anyway. So, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, anything superheat related or anything like that, it's yeah. kind of like. Yeah, I mean, at, at this at this point, like, it's, uh, I always tell guys to work backwards to that. I think that, that is a great training opportunity for apprentices. And a lot of guys are just like, I see apprentices just trying to fly through, like, oh, I got to put the parts in, I got to get out of here. Yeah, if it's summertime, yeah, do that. But if, I mean, if we're slower, get your hours, put the parts in, you know, but or work your way backwards and then put the parts in. Like, yeah. work your way backwards. I you're mean, doing it, multiple different things when you do that as well because you're, you're learning. Um, you're mentally, you're going to be more confident that you're not going to get a, that call back with your name on it. Um, and you're just doing your, basically you're just doing your due diligence and making sure that if that situation, like you said, like if that situation presents itself and you're the apprentice that you'll see how they got to that. So when you're in a, in the, that same position, you'll know how to do it. And you know, you'll look like a super stud and, you know, hey, it's all good, you know. Um, that's, that, yeah, that's huge for sure. Well, uh, Corey, I appreciate you talking to us. Um, you know, uh, Corey, where, where can they find you out, out there on, on Internet land? Uh, I'm primarily on TikTok, at BadTXV, three-minute videos and less. So that's kind of my thing. Um, I'm also on Instagram, same thing, official. Or, well, actually, on Instagram, it's official, BadTXV. So, um yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on. Um, and, yeah, if you guys want to follow me, that'd be great. And comment on my videos about all the stuff I'm doing wrong, potentially, because that's kind of what they're there for, too. I use those videos to help train me. He gets more views than we do, by far. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know, like I he, know. He, blow, he blows your, your stuff away, Brad. So yeah, I like, know. <laughs> it's, that's why you guys just need to do TikTok. No, you know what I mean? He won't say it, but he is slightly salty uh, about it. Oh, no, no. He you is, guys, hey, you guys, have, <laughs> I've said it a million times. You guys have, I credit you guys with 90% of what I understand in this trade. Oh, I appreciate, we appreciate that. that so, man. actually understand, not just um, like know how to do. You know what I mean? So, I, I understand why I'm doing it, what to look for, stuff like that. So, I will say though you are way you you're you're getting better at him than making the memes and he. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Thanks, guys. All right. Take it easy, guys. All right. Thanks, guys.